but everything I see is Mikel, 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 Mikel. Yes, he's made mistakes. Yes, there have been tactical decisions, in-game decisions, but ultimately, you have to put some accountability on these players. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's something wrong. I'm not, I'm not putting this all on Havertz, but with the news that FFP is tight and we are close to the line and we can't really bring in anyone, my, my eyes and mind cast back to Havertz all the time. I, I, I've always thought about replacing the goalkeeper with 10 minutes to go. And he said they were on level. He didn't have a number one. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a lie. How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Supporters Club. We're in the break. It's not the international break. It's the winter break. I think it's a break that Arteta and the players need. Not too sure about the fans. Me, myself, considering the form we're in, it's not a welcome break. It's a break where there's a lot of things running through my mind. So I think this is a welcome Supporters Club. We're going to do a back-to-back -back Supporters Club. And back-to-back -back with these same guests. And it's the usual guest people. Sharoy is back in the building. What are you saying, Sharoy? Aside from football, life's good, man. But this yeah. sport has a funny way of making you remember the bad results as soon as you wake up and it sort of takes the wind out of your sails sometimes, you know? And, and that's why, as you say, this break isn't welcome because I would have loved nothing more than a game to rectify this poor run of results, but we have to wait for it. 100%, 100%. Chris Hudson, OG, legend, AFTV. What are you saying, Chris, man? I'm in not, not Arsenal right now, but what are you saying? Oh, okay. yeah, Happy yeah, New Year. Christmas, and, New yeah. Year. Yeah, fighting fit. Good. But, but yeah, the but. Mm. And the butt is what we're going to get into. We might as well get straight into that. Sheroy just, you know, said he, he doesn't welcome this break, Chris. I suppose you don't. But do you think the players in Arteta do, considering there's a lot of question marks about this new style that we've introduced this season and whether we should go back to what worked last season or should we double down on what we're doing now? What is Arteta going to do? Do you think it's a welcome break for Arteta and the players or do you think they, like us, would want a game to rectify things? No, I think they need a break. I think there's a lot of players... Uh, E.G. Saka, I think he, he doesn't need to see a football game for about three weeks because he's burnt out. Mm. And Arsenal have burnt him out. I could say the same about Martinelli. I think he's burnt out because once again, the squad's proven not to be good enough because we keep on playing. This. Look at the games that Saka's played in when he really didn't need to. You know, it's the same problems, Turkish. And I'm so, I can't believe, I'm in a state of shock being honest with you. And it's not problems that we didn't foresee last season because as much as we was playing well last season, Chris, and, you know, we, we, we started the season so well, 50 points after 19 games, we was all saying around those times that, listen, we're, we're overplaying some of these young players and, you know, we need to bring in backups. And I look at this summer just gone and we, we're going to move on to the summer shortly. And before we do, I think there's something to talk about here. But we didn't really fix the backup issue that we had, did we? No. How many chances are winners and we still haven't got a backup for Saka? I mean, why not? And he rarely comes off, Shiroi. I mean, there's been game after game this season where we've looked at Martinelli and Saka and said, I think this one, Saka should come off. I think the same last season as well. But it seems that Saka's the one that, whether the game means something or it doesn't, whether the three points are in the bag or not come the 70-minute mark, he is the one that pretty much guaranteed close to 90 minutes, if not the full 90 or 100 minutes now considering the injury time. But this is the cause of the frustration because these, these aren't things that we've been talking about recently, right? Before, before we came here, I went back to, in fact, the first supporters club that I did, which was January 22. Yeah. That season, we were pushing for top four and we said, what do we need to get over the line? We were talking about how, I think Aubameyang was already on the way out. Lacazette probably isn't the answer. We were saying, we need a gunman to share the burden. Two years on. We need a gunman. We need a gunman to share the burden. Mm. Looking at the last supporters club we recorded here, we were saying potentially something like the gunman, you can put that, you can put Jesus out to Saka's position. He's very good on the right. He's done it for Man City. You then have the Saka backup. Haven't got that. We were talking about why give Reese Nelson a new contract if you're not going to trust him on the right-hand side, where I actually believe he's, he's yeah. the best. Yeah. And I, think he's, I think he's the best he can be on the right as so opposed right. to the left. Mm -hmm. But then he gets, he gets blooded in against Liverpool um, on, on the opposite flank. These are things we were talking about on the last Supporters Club. Looking at, looking at last January again, for example, the Supporters Club we recorded then, we were talking about Partey's quite injury prone. What happens if he goes down? We're looking at players like maybe Douglas Louise, mm -hmm. a name that's again linked. But what's happened since then? Villa are flying, Douglas Louise has signed a new contract. 
And all of this, all of this has now been exacerbated by the fact that at least last year, we were talking about players being overplayed, but last year, Saka was overplayed, but he banged. Yeah. Martinelli was likely overplayed until Trossard came along, but he banged. Mm -hmm. Odegaard banged. Jesus, when he was fit, banged. I want to delve into why cumulatively all of them have fallen off. Because for me, it's actually quite easy to say, bring in a striker, it solves everything. But what if that striker performs, but you still haven't raised the level of all of them, all of right. those players that I just mentioned, right? It's a real problem. And I can't attribute it all just to burnout. That's what I was going to ask, because that, that, that's an angle that is fair, but it's not really one that I've thought about now. As soon as you said it, Chris, my mind thought initially, 19, 20 games in, but then I remembered back to last season and, and the amount of games they internationals played, as well. internationals included, Saka, we, we mentioned him, but yeah, I mean, but the I, thing, I don't attribute it all to burnout too. But the thing is, because the squad's not good enough, we can't rotate. And plus the fact, Arteta doesn't trust certain people, does he? Like E.G. Smith Rowe. Yeah, no last week, he really upset me, Arteta. I said, oh, no, he's, he's, he's a different... Um, Smith Rowe, since he came back from his last injury, he's shown a lot of hunger and training, and he will get his chance. Really? Three minutes. In the competition, you'd expect him to get chances in that, and now we're out, where then, these chances come. You know, we're talking about injuries. Sinchenko, same problem, calf injury. Party, wonderful player, but he's never, look at the amount of games he's missed since he's joined Arsenal. Missed more he's than over me. 60. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same problem. <laughs> But ju just on rotation. He hates rotating. Right, but you, so, you, so you said the squad's not good enough, but Arteta doesn't trust certain players, he right? He doesn't. We, they're slightly separate for me because I actually think we do have certain players that are probably good enough to start certain games, yet he doesn't. So I think it's actually not that they're necessarily not good enough, but for one reason or another, he doesn't trust them. And as examples, right? I mean... Reese Nelson against Burnley. Let's, ju let's just use that game as an example. How, was it home... We, it was home against Burnley, I believe. Or let's just use a home game against uh, Burnley, Fulham, Nottingham Forest. PS, one of these PSV games. where you're through. Yep, PSV's one. Uh, yeah. PSV where you're through, yeah? That, that, it, that shouldn't necessarily be a question of whether you trust players or not because the results are relevant. You've taken, you've taken a lot of young players where you could perhaps see what they're about. You've got players on the fringe that clearly need minutes. They don't necessarily play. Those are the opportunities where you do find out a bit more about your squad and those are the opportunities where you do rotate. You know, mm. I'm looking at the end of that game. Most of our big guns are on and, and we don't get the win. Is, is Arteta missing a trick because the players aren't good enough or does he actually not trust them? And is that ill-founded? That's, that's some, something that I think we really need to delve into. And that, you know, the PSV game, he took those kids, didn't he? And all the way, leading up to it, I thought, you know what, he's going to play one of yeah. them. And the, the more big one he should be blooding, oh, we need a left back. Let's get someone in on loan. No. Sousa's there. Have a look at Walters or oh, Sousa. Walter, yeah. But you're not looking at him. And you, guess what? Walters' his contract's up in six months. Why would he sign a new contract? Well, the, he's uh, getting a lot of clubs are sniffing around him. And this kind of, this wasn't a point that I was going to raise, but it leads me on to a point that just popped in my head. I mean, I, I think a family member or someone close to Amari Hutchinson. His brother. Reece, oh, yeah, his brother, I saw that. And um, put something on Instagram story talking Free about... the you know, Arsenal youth. Arteta and uh, Arsenal's youth. And then when you actually delve into it and, and you know, uh, that same Champions League game, I think Man City in the same fixture where whoever... Yeah. Was it Oscar well, Bob or right. a, a few other... Newcastle. Look at the young... Newcastle, Miley. In. Miley They've yeah. had an injury crisis. They've blooded him. He, he's one of their best... Whatever you think of the mess Man United in, look at the young boy in their midfield. Every, everyone's doing it. And a part of Arsenal's DNA, which I've grown up with, you've all, I've always said, if you go to the Arsenal, you get a chance. And let's have a little history lesson. Who bailed Arteta out of his last mess? The, the academy. Yeah, exactly. And what's Murtasaka doing? He should, be, he should be banging that door. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not an idiot. I don't expect Nathan Nawani to play 90 minutes at Anfield, but I do expect when I'm beating Sheffield United with fifth, you could bring him on. And the only time he brought him on was at Brentford when he was 15 last season. Well, that was to get him to sign a contract. Which, which, which worked. Yeah, but... I'm really upset about it, as you <laughs> might have get in the gist. <laughs> no, I'm with you. I mean, if, until, until I read that, you know, story from Hutch Amari Hutchinson's brother, I just used, when the youth question used to come about, I just thought, we've got enough young players. 
But I'm also at the stage now where I think one of the elephants in the room, Havertz, will be discussed. But if come Crystal Palace, you ask me, would I rather see a Nwaneri in midfield or a Lewis Skelly instead of a Havertz? Yes. Exactly. Yes. Because I, right now there's something wrong. I'm not, I'm not putting this all on Havertz, but with the news that FFP is tight and we are close to the line and we can't really bring in anyone you know, special this window, my, my eyes and mind cast back to Havertz all the time, I'm sure, right? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's that. And there's also Arteta's messaging when asked about the window, right? It's all, would you like an addition in midfield? Would you like an addition up front? And his, his very staunch answer is, I'm focusing on the players that we have. Now, the players that you have is not just your first 11, it's your fringe players and it's your youth. If we're, ta- if we're talking about depth and we're saying that things aren't going to be coming in externally, you have, you have to look at the alternatives that you have. And everything that we've been hearing about the youth they are viable alternatives. But when you have a 65 million pound midfielder, you shouldn't really be having this conversation. My point, yeah. You shouldn't really be having this conversation. You shouldn't really be talking about blooding in youth in what appears to be a must-win game against Palace at home mm-hmm. after a break. You should be able to play that first 11, trust it entirely, and be confident that you're going to get the result. Right. So when you're talking about what's gone wrong, inevitably, I, I, the way I look at it is, there have been tactical changes, but there's been recruitment. And, and for me, it's actually the recruitment that is a slightly more egregious breach than the tactical changes, okay. because I think if we'd got the recruitment right, mm-hmm. we wouldn't really be focusing on the tactical changes as much, because I think the tactical changes would have probably worked a bit better than they have. On the recruitment, sorry to cut you. Yeah. My, my, my thinking is Rice was the parte replacement slash upgrade long term and Havertz was the one that upgraded on Xhaka. A lot of fans think that parte is meant to be playing with Rice and, and Havertz was the depth of... I mean, what, what perspective do you see it from? Because when parte started the season right back for me, I think that told me everything I need to know. I think the future three for Arteta is and was going to be Rice, Havertz, Odegaard. Thingy. Why would he do that, though? But why did Chris? Let's cast that man back to game week one. Why did Gabriel get dropped for the first couple? Ben White goes into centre back to to accommodate Partey at right know. back. Some people say it's because Zinchenko was injured. Yeah, Timber slotted in for Zinchenko. We still had Gabriel. We still had Saliba. We still yeah. had um, Ben White, and we still had Partey. There was a rumor on Gabriel that he had there was Saudi interest on there. That his head wasn't straight, but you know that's I don't know that. You know. Like the rumor that Ben White's injured, but he still plays against yeah, PSV. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, smoke and mirrors. You know. It's hard to really. What? Do you, how, how do you see it? Do you think he's unfortunate with the Partey injury as much as people believe, or do you think like me that? The party injury has kind of helped people, well, not helped, but made people forget the initial approach that Arteta stepped into the season with. Well, I want to start by saying he's not unfortunate with the party injury because it's, it's been a pattern. Surprise, you surprise. Know, you, can't, you can't then talk, look, the timber one is unfortunate. No, very, yeah? very. Maybe Partey's first one was unfortunate. Yeah. Maybe Jesus' first one was unfortunate. <laughs> Maybe Tommy Asu's first one was unfortunate. But when you see over two seasons that these are recurring things, it's not unfortunate. It's a lack of foresight. You need to plan accordingly, right? So if Partey was in his plans as being one of his starting midfielders and he was banking on that for the season, that's a problem. Already. That's a problem. Already. Yeah, before you even start thinking about the way it's going to shape up. Mm-hmm. And inevitably, man, look, the way that Havertz started, I think he did have to, he did have to rethink what he was doing with that player. Which is, which is why you then see he's, he's quite adamant at the beginning of the season. No, this guy's an addition to midfield. But then you see him playing in the nine sometimes. Or you see him playing a slightly more advanced role in a two because yeah. he realises that it's not quite working as the Jacques upgrade, if we want to call it that. Um, and I think ultimately Rice has done very well to look as good as he has, given, given the difficulty he's had with his partner. Um, and, that com- and that comes full circle back to this Kai Havertz issue. Um, we it's bewildering were, for me, you know. We were talking about, again, though, we were talking about it in these exact same seats in the last supporters yeah. club. We were saying, what, what did you necessarily expect when you brought the player in? After that, almost immediately after that, he goes on a decent goal scoring run. Yeah. And I start thinking, all right, I'm not going to eat my words just yet, but this is an improvement. And that's I'm what glad you said goal scoring run, yeah. because a lot of people confuse that for a good run of games. No, he had moments in those was games. Run, we're yeah. yet to see even a 30 minute good performance from him. His and, best guy was Luton. Away. Yeah, yeah, I actually agree yeah. with that. I agree with that. I yeah. thought, I was sat there, thought, you know what? Perhaps he's, he's clicked. Perhaps that 0 out of 5 we gave him at the last, 
when we write yeah. you just yeah. you know what well, in fact he's eating a free but then he's regressed isn't he he has it is is i mean it's easier to sit here after 20 games and and the recent run one winning seven and answer this question with yes i mean but three weeks ago four weeks ago christmas day arsenal are top of the league mm-hmm. arsenal are still in the fa cup is rice the only shining light so far this season or has there been something else that has caught your eye or caught your Saliba, attention? Saliba, Gabriel have done okay. Gabriel Saliba's imp- yeah. continued improvement. I'd agree but, with that. Oh, well, that, I'm slowly. Chris, back to you again. The, the only person right at the start of the transfer <laughs> window to mention bringing in competition for Ramsdale and, and you know, you, your, your, your concerns about Ramsdale at the highest level. That happened. Um, probably not and maybe not the keeper that you would have had in mind. But it happened. Competition did come in. But actually, I used the word competition. It, ha- it wasn't really competition coming in. It was a replacement coming in. So you didn't really get your wish in that sense. But Ramsdale's been replaced. 20 games in. What have you made of that decision? Has, do you think it's been... I'm, the- I'm totally underwhelmed. I'll tell you something. It doesn't matter who I have in goal at Arsenal Football Club. They're defending from corners is awful. Whether it be Ray or Ramsdale. But I've been fair to Ramsdale. I don't know why... But people feel a little bit safer with him. All of a sudden, yeah. Yeah. And the crowd, I'm not something else I've noticed. Especially at Fulham away and the, and at Liverpool, the crowd were really cheering Ramsdale when he was do you know when Raya went down yeah, and got yeah, injured I heard, at Fulham? Yeah. Everyone around me went, He's injured. No, you shouldn't be you know what I mean? That's awful, isn't it? Yeah. And who's created that? Because this remind when what did Arteta say when he brought Raya in? I've always thought about replacing the goalkeeper with 10 minutes to go and he said they were on level. He didn't have a number one. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a lie. It's Raya's number faced. one. Yeah, which is something I think we all kind of saw coming, yeah. the way Raya came. But if you're asking that, me the question, it hasn't been I, I still think Ramsdale, Ramsdale still made a mistake Sunday, you know. For the goal? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah. Well, so, so am I... I still stick by what I said, that we, but, but it I've wasn't the say, right option. I've got to say the replacement is totally underwhelming. He's got it wrong, essentially, Mikael. He's Unfortunately, got it wrong. yeah. Um, question to actually, no, you haven't give, given your thoughts on the Raya Ramsdale. Sorry, for I'm, I'm glad. <clears throat> I'm glad this question's asked, having seen Ramsdale's last performance, because that ball over the top is it's something that you know set, sets up an attack, and ultimately, Reese should have buried that. In my opinion. And right. that was something that apparently was guaranteed that Raya brings better than Correct. Ramsdale, but we haven't even seen that yet, yeah. Correct. And that incredible save down to his right, very low. Yep. Second half, yeah. yeah. I'm looking at that and going, man, that's what I remember you doing. That's what you add to this team. And then I look at him being in no man's land for the goal. So I'm looking at Ramsdale and saying, that, that ultimately sums you up. Moments of brilliance. Mm-hmm. And if you remember, I don't, I don't know if you guys saw this, um, but on the camera when he makes that save, Ramsdale gets up and, and he's beaming. Yeah. Like we've just won the game and I'm going, no, 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 no. Head in the focus. game. Head in the game. Don't smile like you've won the game. You just made a save. Look, I get it. It's human, but no, focus, right? That sums him up to an extent. He can't focus because he admitted it. He has, his, own, he, has his, yeah. he has his problems. He has his flaws. And in actual fact, that was a wonderful sort of in isolation illustration of what I think of Aaron Ramsdale. There is absolute brilliance in there, mm-hmm. but it comes with his own problems. So if, you, if, you're, if you're looking at someone who can remedy all of that, you have to bring in someone who is basically your Alison or your Edison, and there aren't that many of them around. Yeah. If, if, if you're not going to do that, then it's not really worth addressing the situation. Risk, yeah. um, and I, um, a lot of people might say, all right, sure, or you're sitting there saying that with hindsight. Not necessarily, because even when I looked at Raya at Brentford, where he had nowhere near as much pressure as he would at Arsenal. He was very good. Yeah. But I wasn't looking at him in that level it of goalkeeper. It still came out of nowhere. Yeah. Like I said, Chris was the only person all summer that said bring in a keeper. But I think when he said competition, he just meant someone to push Aaron a bit more. Yeah, yeah. But thinking that Ramsdale was still the number one. Yeah. As it's opposed to, to someone who's going to instantly than... usurp him. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're bringing in competition, what, what is the basis of the word competition? You, you do something consistently on merit to get your reward. That isn't what we saw with the way that Raya entered the team. Yeah. And that isn't what we saw with the way Ramsdale dropped out of the team. And that perhaps has not only caused discontent maybe with the fan base, but 
I don't know what, what it does in a dressing room. I was going to ask that next, but we don't know for sure. But yeah. Well, yeah, but the thing is, I'll tell you what it might do in the dressing room, because whatever you say about Ramsdale, he was fantastic last season. He, he got, for the most part, He got yeah. quite a few yeah. awards. Yeah. And perhaps the rest of the squad have sat down and seen how harshly he's been treated, and that's got their backs up a bit. You don't know, do you? If he, they might, if he can do that to him, they should do it to me. And it doesn't help that he hasn't justified it. And by he, I yeah, mean Yeah, then Raya. I feel a little bit sorry for Raya because he's, he's playing under a, a a more pressure, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he must know the crowd love Ramsdale. He, he's a fan favourite. Yeah. yeah. Like Ramsdale's one of them ones that, uh, one of the rare few over the Emirates era that, listen, multiple players have had allegiances of fans on that and, and, you know, backing them and I look for little or no reason. With Ramsdale, I understand why people connected to him. I always had concerns about his goalkeeping, but as a, as a person, yeah, a character. as a personality. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's also the circumstances within which he comes in. It's lovely to have a player like that win you over because no one was over the moon when he came in anyway, right? But all right, so let's say you're saying got their backs up and they're sitting there thinking, man, if he could do that to them, he could do it to me. This is where we've spoken about Arteta and his decision making a lot here. I want to talk about the players. I don't like listening to everyone in the content creation world and what I see on Twitter and stuff, which I understand isn't reflective of the entire Arsenal fan base, but everything I see is Mikel, 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 Mikel. Yes, he's made mistakes. Yes, there have been tactical decisions, in-game decisions, but ultimately you have to put some accountability on these players. Mm -hmm. You absolutely have to because the players that I've always sort of held at, at, at the pinnacle of my estimation, if they felt that pressure and they felt that someone could take their place, they, they put it beyond the manager's decision-making process and they say, all right, cool, I need to level up again. You know, th that's the elite mentality. But a lot of these players haven't necessarily done that. But did, I'll go back to something you said earlier. Um, and, I, and when you say the people online talking about it's all on Arteta, I separate myself from that because I know exactly what you're saying. Because, if, uh, you know, if it's a win, the Arteta in crowd is ready to shove it down the Arteta out crowd. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. it's a loss, yeah, I'm not talking about that. I do put most of this on Mikel. Reason being, because of something you said earlier or a question you asked, the, the whole cumulative aspect of it. Yeah. When have you seen so many players drop off from such good form to, to, not, to be in a shadow of themselves before? That's why I, I focus more on Mikel here than the players themselves, even though you're right. Player, I mean, I expect the Saka and Martinelli to, to hit 20, you know, one of them to hit 20 Premier League goals this year. Yep. I never looked at Jesus as one to improve his numbers. I just expected around 15 from Jesus, but I thought Saka or Martinelli, fingers crossed both, yeah. can hit the 20 goal mark, but they're nowhere near that. Ben White, nowhere near the levels he was last season. Does he overlap as much? Talks about an injury. Unfortunate with Timber, but it's only really been Rice year on year and Saliba and Gabriel that have either maintained standards or increased standards. And, and the thing is, during Arteta's reign, we've had these what I call little batches of games where we've we've just disintegrated, yeah. right? and it's you know, we've lost three or four on yeah, the trot. Yeah. But being fair to him, he's always pulled us out. So let's pray, you know, let's pray they they come out of it. But do you understand that side of I it cumulatively? It. Ha if you, if you was to apply percentage to who's to blame here, Mikel, the players, what percentage would you put on Mikel? What percentage would you put on the players? For me, I'd say 80, Mikel, 20 players. Mm. And that leans more towards... I'll say 60, 40. I was, le I was leaning that way. I was leaning more towards 90, 10. Really? really? Because it's, every player is either signed by him, renewed a contract, faith shown, every single player now. Rob Holding was one that he believed in last season. He steps in, doesn't live up to the expectation. Yeah. We, this season, it seems like Eddie might be that guy or Reese Nelson might be that guy or Jorginho or Nene might be that guy where we're looking at our first teamers and saying he was out and the backups weren't good enough. The, all right, the reason I don't necessarily look at it like that is because, look, two weeks is a long time in football, right? But if, I, if I'm looking at us top of the table at Christmas, I'm sitting there going, We've beaten City in the Community Shield. We've, we've beaten City in the league. We've had some incredible Champions League performances. We've basically stormed that group. We've got a point at Anfield when the Liverpool team actually sort of turned the tide in that mm -hmm. game. And there was a point where we, you know, I was looking at that going, we there's, showed actually some, a lot of, there's actually a lot of good here. Yeah, we showed some balls in that second half. Right. So, and, and that's why I can't just sit here and say, Arteta's oh, got absolutely everything mm -hmm. horribly wrong. Because at that point, I was not just content, I was pretty happy. Yeah, I was pretty happy at that point. 
Yeah. And as I said, two weeks is a long time in football. So I'm then looking at what's gone wrong since. I'm looking at West Ham, let's say. That, that West Ham game, for me, notwithstanding the fact that the tactics weren't the tactics of last year, there's no way the Hammers should be leaving with a clean sheet in that game if it's not for some of, the, some of those poor decisions by players. Mm-hmm. For me, I'm looking at Gabriel Jesus in that game for just not burying chances, mm-hmm. right? Um, that, necess- that, for me, wasn't necessarily tactical. That was execution. What about the goals we conceded? Correct. Because it was two with a penalty. It should have been three. Yeah. So regardless of the attack not converting, yeah. tactically, something, you know, let us down defensively. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. And that, that's the other, I mean, a lot of us are focusing on the attack. Yeah. But... That doesn't change the fact that we shouldn't have to score two or three every game to win a match. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Right, um, but there have there have been real individual errors there. You can look at you can look at injuries. All right, Timber Timber being injured is a problem. Big bro, yeah. Tommy Asu being injured is a problem. Yeah. But is it me or is Zinchenko defensively worse this year? Yeah, he is. Yeah. That, yeah. He's not a defender. Fine. Fine. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'd agree with that. To be honest, I don't think he's a midfielder either. That, I'm not saying he, but. We we're talking a defensive. The goal at Villa we that. conceded. But it's yeah. a replica okay, but of even, the goal at Anfield last season. Yeah. Even even the goal at Villa, I could I could sit here and talk about Raya for that as well, but I'm not going to. Even the goal at Villa, my God, how did we not score in that game? Yeah. I'm not yeah. even talking about clear cut chances. I'm talking about when you know you're just in front of their yeah, yeah. their back four or whatever, but two of them are behind you, two of them are in front of you. You've got mm-hmm. literally acres of space, and we was and we're not finding it. That's not defensively tactics. we were solid that yeah. way. Exactly, yeah. that's that not a bad that's, VAR decision. That's execution. That's not that's not tactics. We, tactically, we we got that right, but we would we fluffed our lines. You know, the the, the, the real concerning one for me was that Fulham one. Mm-hmm. That that was inexplicable. Yeah. Poorest performance. That was inexplicable. 18, maybe eighteen months. And Arte- and Arteta also agreed that it was inexplicable. So why? What is it? You can come out of of the blocks in a game like that, score and look pretty good before you score, but yeah. score within what six minutes, something like that. Know, yeah. What's the drop off about? In, that, in, perform- in performance level. In performance level, what's that about? Is that is that players resting on their laurels and thinking, okay, fine, we've got the goal, it's just going to go our way? Because if so. I'm sorry, I don't think that mentality comes from Arteta. Based no. on, and I, I, know, I know I don't have a window into the dressing room, but that all-or-nothing documentary is something of a window, right? Mm-hmm. That guy yeah. doesn't suddenly go, don't worry, it's, it's lesser Premier League opposition, you've got the goal, it's fine. Nah, he emphasises that every game's a difficult game, mm-hmm. every manager's a difficult so, so what? And that's why I'm looking at the players, right? And I'm looking at a lot of these games tactically, we haven't been that bad. There, there's there's yeah, literally the Fulham dominated game. dominated the majority. And, even, and again, the Liverpool game. In, in the cup, that first half, game should be out of sight. 100%. It's not the tactics. We got that tactically right in the first half to the extent that even if Liverpool scored two goals in the second half, they should not have won that game. That's execution. So I'm trying to fi- And that's why, look, it's easy to say... Do you think it's more the balance tactically then? Because you are right. If I look at all of our fixtures against Liverpool and City this year, yeah. we picked up a win, draw and a loss. Yeah. Really and truly on the big picture... You could argue that City should have been a draw and we capitalised at the end, but we got the three points. The, yeah. the, the Anfield fixture, I think a draw was a fair result. Yeah. Emirates won, we should have won it. So tactically, the gap has been narrowed over the last three years, two years even. Yeah. It, it, City's a prime example year on year. Mm. Smoked left, right and centre last year by City. This year, we, we win one nil. So tactically, it seems that we're better set up against them. But I don't think he's found the balance to... Against the Fulham, against the West Ham, we, we did create enough to win. West Ham, we created enough to win, but... It was in a very... Actually, Aston Villa aside, because Aston Villa was very free-flowing, yeah. open space. But we're creating chances, maybe the same number of chances we're creating last year. But if we do get a goal, Nottingham Forest even, the first game of the season, we yeah. get a goal, it's that handbrake on. Fulham, we go 2-1 up, handbrake on. United, after our first goal, the first goal brought us back in it. We didn't create a chance until injury time again. So, yeah. tactically, he's narrowed the gap on the big boys, which is City and Liverpool. But then some of the small, smaller boys, no offence, you know, yeah. they've kind of taken advantage of this. And, and now they, now 19, 20 games in, I don't think they fear Arsenal like they once did 12 months ago. I don't think Palace fear us. I, I know a Palace fan quite well and I've known him for years and this is the most optimistic he's going into this game. Well, you know what they do. They're Roy Hodgson, they come, they're set up well, they have a lease, eh? they, they wait 70 minutes, we'll miss numerous chances. And they might do us on the break or from a corner. Bang. But my, but my understanding was, and anyway, I might have got this wrong, 
But I always thought that he, lo- he looked at the way that we got picked apart towards the end of last season yeah. by some of those lesser teams and in the top four race West the year Hampton, before Hampton, and said, you know what, I kind of need to tweak this so that we're better against the teams that are slightly more defensively resolute and don't come to play because with the teams that come to play, we've got what it takes. Do you think he panicked then? Because I've mentioned that. Yeah. Sorry to cut you, but you raised a good point. But I actually, 38 games last season, 20. Out of the 58 games we've seen across the last 18 months, I think the first 30 of last season, the balance was perfect. I think we tend to forget because of the last eight games, yeah. how good defensively we was in those first 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Away, clean sheet after away, clean sheet, defensively yeah, resolute. Exactly. It fell apart when Saliba and Gabriel... And then you're right, I do think he... Pa- panicked or overthought those eight games and then done a big change when nece- a big change wasn't necessary in my opinion i think adding the necessary backups to avoid a similar situation mm. would have been better option but i and, I and i know you were speaking just now but i also want to add in i looked at declan rice and havertz as arteta's van dyke and allison you, you've got a title challenge inside now you've got 200 million to spend final two pieces of the jigsaw put them in <laughs> He is. Everything is Arteta, Arteta, but he's surrounded by backroom staff mm. and coaches. And they analyse things. So it's not so it's not just them, is it? But it will go to all or nothing. It didn't seem like anyone wanted to cut up his contract, but Arteta and they stuck every single person in that room, Edu, Tim Lewis, they didn't seem fully for it, but they said with Arteta, cool. I could imagine that Arteta says Havertz and Edu says, are you sure? This is out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. And Arteta saying yes, and them sticking by him because they've done so the whole way so far. That's why a lot of it does, for me, come down to him. I remember we did lose one of our backroom staff last season. That's Steve Round. Yeah. He, and he's gone to West Ham. Mm-hmm. And I think, I don't know what you think of West Ham this season. They look quite impressive. Oh, yeah. They've got they a lot. They've spent the money well. Kudos. Mm. You wouldn't say no. Don't get me started. Cause we could have signed Kudos and Madison for 10 million more than Havertz. We could have signed Madison and DRB for 15 million more. Kudos and, and DRB. Do you know how much better off we would have been? And I don't even want to get angry because I'm the host of this show. So I'd rather you two talk. But when I just think of what we could have done and what we did, and then now looking forward at the summer, forget January now, because I don't think we can fix our problem in January. In the summer, I don't see anyone that stands out at the right price that I think, all right, Arsenal should go get him. And there was an abundance of them. I like what you remind everyone, Edu got an award for a bit for his, how yeah. well he'd done. Yeah, Shabozda, McAllister, two more. Yeah, but, but we've, I, missed out I, I on, we've missed out on so many in that position that I, I, I just think, have we fucked it for the next few years now with this? He's a... Is he our highest paid player, Havertz? I, I refuse so. to believe this. So. Every time I read it, that's no, no. I've read something in excess of 300. A look, week. look, Arteta has got special qualities, but let me take Arteta out of this equation. That's mad. If you told me this manager, it could be anyone, Ten Hag, Mikel, Pep, it could be, actually not Pep, let me say Pep, because if he does something, <laughs> you might, he's proven enough. Yeah. Any other, other club aside from Klopp and, and, and even Klopp, they'd be like, if he signed Havertz and made him the most expensive player at the club, I'd be like, fine. Chelsea, United, Tottenham, Ars- I'd be like, if their manager signs Havertz and makes him the highest paid player at the club, it's a sack of the defence. Forget everything else that happens. But that alone, because of how poorly I view Havertz, but he's gone and done that. And when I think of the options we could have had, that's why I understand what you're saying. It's not, it's not all Arteta. And I have more of a problem with the recruitment through the Arteta lens mm. than I do with the performances and the results. I get you. And I, I, and get, I get that you. the recruitment can contributes to that. You, I but you, I that, that I put the recruitment I put squarely at Arteta's door. And I don't need to sit here and repeat what I think about Kai Havertz because I've, I've I've said it before, right? But everything that we're saying now, it almost sounds. And this is what I've been hearing basically since the West Ham loss, and certainly since the Fulham loss. It's almost like a season obituary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's not done. If you're beginning of this season, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've heard you say this. I've heard a few say this, saying yeah. Obviously, silverware is silverware, but Carabao Cup and FA Cup to an extent, that's not good enough this year. It's Premier League and Champions League. So going out of those cups, as upsetting as it might be, and I'm not shitting on those cups, I value them, they don't move the needle if you win. Yeah, the Premier League and the Champions League do. Champions League, again, two weeks ago, I was looking at that, saying we're top of the group, stormed it. It's because of what's happened in that intervening period. Yeah, The performances have now decimated the level of faith and, and the level of hope. And it's got everyone questioning absolutely everything. That, that can't run. I'm so, that, that can't run. All of, the, all of the good work that has been done up until that point cannot go to shit because of 
a handful of bad results, which are damaging but not irreparable. Because if everyone sits there and gives up at that point, I mean, it's like giving up on your fighter in the sixth round. What's the point of being in the ring? Mm -hmm. What's the point of being in the ring? Uh, that and handful turns to two handfuls. Correct. You've got a problem in the league. Correct. I, I, uh, I completely, get it. I completely get it. And that's why, but, but what I'm saying is a lot of the conclusions that people are coming to are almost end of season conclusions. Yeah, yeah. yeah? That's, that's, yeah. And, that's, yeah, yeah. and that's what frustrates me because the season is not over. That question and frustrates me too. What happens if this? What would you think about if this? Just hold let, tight. Let it happen. Hold tight and find then out. I'll give my honest view of it, if I'm honest. Uh, exactly, exactly. But every, look, everything that everyone's talking about, we're right to question it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you can't question yeah, it either. Yeah. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is it can be fixed. And in the same way that one bad result can bring two or three, one very good result can bring a hell of a lot more too. Uh, let me pause you there because you're going to lead me on not only to my next point, but the next show. Okay. You know, the next show. So people, hopefully you've enjoyed this one. What's gone wrong? Leave us your thoughts in the comment section below. Big up Chris Hudson, big up Shiroi. Make sure you go follow Shiroi's channel at Shiroi's Voice. We'll tag it up as well. Reason I've cut it there is because we're going to move on to the next show. Same guests, like I said, Chris Hudson and Shiroi. But the next question is, how do we fix this? And it works perfectly off, of, uh, perfectly off what Shiroi was saying there. In between this and the next Supporters Club, we have Forever Arsenal coming out. We've got an abundance of shows. Make sure you subscribe. Put the notification bell on people and hit the like button. Let's get this video to a thousand likes and make sure you're there for the next one. I'm not going to tell you when. I'm just going to tell you subscribe and put the notification bell on and then you'll know people. Love for the love. We're out. Peace.